Uh, without further ado, uh, I would like to introduce uh, Sean Chua from S202, a current student at SSD, who will be sharing with you uh, about uh, his experiences as an SSD student and how SSD has transformed him. Sean, over to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Noor. Uh, good morning, parents and everyone. Uh, I am Sean Chua, as Mr. Noor mentioned, from S202. And I would like to, my, I hope that through my talk, I can help you guys or help the parents get an insight to a student's life outside of a teacher's perspective. So looking at my viewpoint. So uh, when I first joined SSD, we started with an orientation because everything starts with that. So our orientation was run by seniors, more specifically the peer support board. Uh, we could tell that the seniors put in a lot of effort in crafting a unique orientation program, which I will explain why it is that special later on. And it, it gets us into the special culture of SSD. We had many challenges and mini group work to help us mingle with other students and give us a taste of group work with which SSD emphasizes a lot on. So uh, one such group work that I would like to highlight is the newspaper challenge, where we would have to craft the tallest newspaper challenge uh, with just newspaper and scotch tape. So we had to work with groups uh, we had to work with uh, people that we didn't know. So we were shy at first and we had to mingle with others uh, and we had to work collaboratively and cohesively to create the tallest newspaper tower. And uh, after this small little orientation segment, we ended it off with the badge ceremony, which the teachers did uh, talk about. And it was the last step in becoming uh, part of the SSD community. Uh, shortly after the orientation, we had our first legitimate, as we may call it, group work. It was Save the Dog. So Save the Dog is a tradition for SEC ones, all SEC ones to participate in. And it was a challenge to obtain a one kilogram heavy dog from a very tall cupboard. Of course, it wasn't a real dog. It was like uh, a doll. So it was heavy and the cupboard was certainly taller than all of us with a considerable margin. One other challenge that was that we had to obtain it from one meter away from the cupboard. And we had to create our own contraptions from scratch to obtain the dog. Again, focusing on group work, which is one of the 21st century competencies, we had to work with others. Uh, in this case, it was a pair to get the dog down. Uh, this was just the first part. And after that, we, had, uh, to, we started studying. So we, we, there were tests, there were group works which had marks on the line. And this was after the introductory program. Uh, after that, it was clear that I could feel the education vigor, vigor of SSD. And it was slightly challenging to get into the habit of studying again after two months. Yeah, uh, due to our learning, uh, applied learning approach, we were all given a learning device, which was a MacBook, and the teachers used this MacBook uh, to engage in educational activities extensively. So we, now, apart from doing homework online, we had uh, lessons on the computer live on the lesson itself. And one such moment was I, that I remember was during math, we were learning linear graphs and our math teacher decided to use the software called Desmos, which is a graphing software where we would input an equation and it will plot the graph for us. So it wasn't just last year, we also did it this year with quadratic graphs and I actually had to learn how to use a computer outside of video games. Yeah. So, so we use this Desmos program to help us learn uh, concepts of math that could be obtained using the traditional pen and paper method, but it was more effective for me at least uh, using a computer. We had to find it out on our own instead of the teacher dumping all the information on us. So uh, we, we also uh, participated in many performance tasks, uh, similar to Save the Dog, but except there were stakes on the line, for example, marks, uh, grades, results. So it also focuses on applied learning and working with others. And we had to solve real world authentic problems, as the teachers mentioned earlier, change makers, InnoScience challenge. And one performance task that I would like to highlight is the science performance task, which we had to create a mousetrap car. 
we had to create it from scratch uh, with limited instructions. So we had to learn how to research, uh, how to make one and how to actually get it to work. Yeah. So uh, apart, uh, we learned concepts through this energy conversion, which is one of the main point of this, mass, uh, this performance task, which is to teach us energy conversion at the time. Uh, we also use this software called Tracker, which we would uh, plot the movement of our mouse trapped car. Uh, we, would tra we would track the movement of our mouse trapped car and we could calculate the energy conversion with that. So that was just sec one. Uh, of course, there were other activities in between, for example, in the science series the teachers explained, so I would not touch a lot on that. But for sec two, we, also, we had ISS, which the teachers also explained, but I would give a personal insight on it. So ISS, we actually had to craft a unique research uh, study that we uh, conducted. So we would work again with group mates and we would uh, find a problem that we would try to test our hypothesis on. Uh, we, we, uh, we had to, we learned how to write a proposal, a research paper, and it gives us an insight on how these are actually done in the real world of science. So for example, at the start, we had to write a research proposal where we would show the teachers and they would authorize our experiment and they would give us materials for us to do it on our own. The school also went out of their way to uh, purchase uh, equipment or apparatus that we use to, that we may use that is not currently found in the school. So yeah, the school also tried to cater to all of our different ideas, allowing us to explore our creativity without a visible limit. We could uh, purchase if it was a reasonable purchase. Uh, the last thing I'd like to talk about for sec two because uh, it wasn't, it's still half the year, there are still more experiences to come, was the geography learning journey where I went to Singapore City Gallery and learned about the Singapore sustainability and also the history of Singapore in terms of housing and transport, which is a direct correlation to our exams and our uh, content which we learned during geography itself. So we went there, we watched many light shows. We had a worksheet we had to complete, which will help reinforce our understanding on all the concepts that we learned. Yeah, uh, one thing that the teacher touched on, which was LABB. And they, I felt that they gave, gave a really uh, small look on it, but I would like to explain my uh, experience with LABB. We were, my class was paired with uh, a school called CGGS from Australia, which is Canberra Girls Grammar School. And we learned how to communicate with them through online means. The first session to say the least was awkward, but we had facilitators uh, from our end, Singapore's end and Australia's end and to help facilitate discussions for the first session, which was icebreaker. We had to communicate and really be comfortable with uh, both with, uh, with the other side. And the next uh, segments were uh, craft, were finding a problem, specifically United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We had to uh, find a way uh, using an Instagram post to help advocate for uh, certain causes found in the UN SDG. So again, we had to recognize and do our research on the United, United Nations SDG and work with other parties that we may not be so familiar with and craft a advocacy project. Apart from learning and working with others, we also learned cross-cultural understanding because it is a group of people that we sometimes rarely talk to. So yeah, that will be the end of my presentation. There will Thank be more you. experiences uh, on the way to come, Sec 3 and Sec 4. So this is just a small look on the Sec 2 perspective of a student. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. Yes, that was indeed insightful from your student's perspective. So right now, what will happen is that we will move on to hear from our parent, uh, who is uh, the parent of uh, one of the students in Secondary 3, Mr. Wang Yuxian. Over to you. Good morning, parents. Uh, and, uh... Uh, boys and girls from Primary 6, a uh, batch that's uh, looking for the joint SST. 
Um, glad to be here to talk a little bit about uh, the journey that my daughter went through in the, getting into SSD and how she's doing now. So quick introduction, uh, I'm uh, part of the P4 SSD, we are the parent support group. Uh, my daughter is currently in SEC3, uh, she is doing biotech. Uh, she also serves in the student council as the vice chairperson uh, and for CCA she's uh, currently doing fencing. So, uh, rewinding back a little bit, two, three years back, I think uh, three years back actually when uh, when deciding for secondary schools, right? So uh, I think me and my wife were definitely not the Ganjong parents type, so we didn't really pay much attention. Uh, we all the while had the assumption that she was going to go into a certain school uh, because of affiliation for a primary school. Uh, but towards PSLE, so she suddenly kind of dropped the bomb, she said, oh, I don't want to go there anymore. Uh, I want to look for a small school where I do not know most of the people because her school had the history of everybody in the same school. She wanted a different environment. We were like, oh no, now we have to suddenly start doing research. So what it means is that we actually totally missed the DSA period. Uh, and we like, started looking around, asking fellow uh, friends like, oh, what's this good school? And then we came across SSD, right? So uh, did a bit of research, talked to people, look at the what, what information. And myself being more of a tech guy, I think there were a couple of things that kind of like went off as, hey, this is, this is something interesting, a very different school. Uh, one is really the focus on science and tech, I think, and, and the, the, the way that it's doing it is more of a, not of a hard teaching kind of science, but really more of all-rounder, uh, more application to real life. And, uh, and, and I think when I look at some of the, the, the materials, the information that was provided, what I noticed particularly was that how it was very relevant in today's, uh, today's uh, real life environment. It's not your typical brochureware kind of uh, tech languages, right? So particularly, I think, for example, looking at, uh, I think it was mentioned quite, quite a few times earlier as well, the Change Maker series. I thought that was a very interesting concept. Basically, you're marrying very hardcore ICT technology with, uh, with an entrepreneurial mindset, right? And to really to solve real life problem in a more people-oriented manner. And this is something that we, even in the industry today, we, this is what we look for a lot. It's not just about being very strong, hard, hard, hardcore tech skills. So I thought that was interesting. And uh, I also saw that there were, uh, there were a lot of opportunities in terms of uh, being for industrial attachment, uh, partnership with high institutions and overseas schools, right? So that, that kind of kind of really convinced me to, hey, give it a try, right? So got my daughter through uh, a, I think what's called a supplementary intake, uh, went through interviews, uh, and lucky enough, we, we went through, I think, particularly for her, I think a lot of these characteristics at that point of time, a primary six student won't be able to tell. They don't quite know what they want, right? So for her, I think particularly the, the piece that sealed the deal for her was a very beautiful looking school jacket. That was her, that was her primary uh, uh, motivation to join the school. So moving forward today, uh, three years later, what I can see. So I kind of see my daughter being a bit more of a left brain logical thinker. So I think the approach of school is taking, the syllabus taking in terms of very investigative approach on science and numbers, uh, definitely right up her alley, right, for her. Uh, I can see that she's very self-motivated, uh, really enjoying the learning process. A uh, couple of things that constantly I hear from her in terms of feedback, uh, the PT work that she do, PT, or in our generation, we call it project work. Now I think we call PT means performance task, right? Uh, I think it's a, a lot of focus on it. And I think what's interesting is really the, 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 that being used as a way to teach them life skills in today. I think of a lot of us that work, we know we don't work individually, work in teams. The ability to prioritize your work, better time management, manage your teammate, uh, these are very, very important skills. And I can see that she's really uh, having some challenges at the beginning. I think she's improving, she's learning along the way. And one of the things also is that the, the huge element in terms of uh, presentations, uh, that I've really seen a big change. So uh, for a lot of teenagers, I, I think maybe I should say, shouldn't generalize, but maybe say in my daughter's case, communication is not a plus. It's not a, a strong point for a lot of teenagers. They don't like to talk, right? So I saw a change in her in terms of using presentation as a way to express herself. So interestingly, now we kind of have this. Every few weeks at home, she will uh, she will prepare slides and then she will come to us, say, hey, and then she'll project on TV and say, I want to tell you what's happening at school, what's happening in my life. And she found that as, I think it's a great way to practice the presentation at the same time also for a way to kind of communicate as well as a, that's a way that she's very comfortable. Um, the other part I think the, that I've seen a big change in her is really in terms of how uh, she has pushed herself to beyond her comfort zone. Uh, things that I never expected her to do. Uh, she is in the past probably a little bit more of a layback, not really want to do much, but I saw herself uh, really pushing herself, like for example, uh, when the opportunity came for 
when choosing for CCA, she didn't choose something that she's familiar with. Fencing is not something she had done at all. She started it in school and then she could develop enough interest and she actually wanted to do a teaching course externally as well. Uh, she went for student council and not only that, I was like, oh, really, you want to do student council? Like, okay, go ahead. And then and then she even went to join, tried to, uh, she went for the, the, the to join the EXCO and she, she, she got into the committee as well. So I was like, okay, this is kind of interesting. Uh, some other stuff that she went for inter school games. Uh, recently, she did the the uh, national school game for fencing. Uh, surprisingly, okay, and she didn't she didn't get eliminated first round. I think she did decently well. Uh, she even did some Chinese drama in school, where even though her Chinese is really kind of uh, half past six, right? Uh, and I know that she's coming up. She's going to be going for this um, NUS. Uh, I think it's called STEM Brain Camp uh, by Tomasi Foundation in June holiday. She's pretty excited about it. I think what's interesting is that all this is not the parents pushing her to, but she found opportunity and she said, yeah, I want to go for this. So I think that was a that is, that is a that's a, a great outcome. So uh taking a step back, I think when I look at what how how SST as a school environment have helped her, I think not only that it actually allow her to do well academically, I think she's got very good support from parents, from uh, class as well. Uh, but really, the real life application is uh, is very authentic. Uh, this is, I think, this is very very valuable. I think as parents, what we're looking for is not just about good grades; it's really part of growing up and to a better person, right? And I think the school have provided a very safe and encouraging environment, which allowed her to try new things. And she felt that she could get out of her comfort zone and really push herself more. Uh, so I'm I'm quite confident that I think with with the environment that she has gotten, she will be able to learn and mature into a, a all round all round uh, adult in the in the next few years. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. And this is a bit of a quick sharing from, from, from a parent's perspective. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Wong. All right. Uh, now that you have heard about how uh, SSD has transformed uh, Mr. Wong's daughter, we can now listen to the journey that uh, an alumni went through. Uh, so we'll hear from Mr. Choi Min Sook, who is the pioneer batch from 2013. Min Sook, over to you. Hi, thanks, Mr. No. Uh, yeah, so good morning, everyone. My name is Minsu, and I'm from the class of 2013, the Pioneer Batch. So um, after SST, I actually went on to JC, then I went on to pursue a computer science degree at NUS, which I just graduated, and now I'm just waiting to start my job as a software engineer at one of the big tech companies. Uh, if you are familiar with this acronym FANG, it's one of them, yeah. So basically, I'll just talk about my experiences in SSD, which, which most of with what is different from traditional schools and how they have benefited me in getting to where I am today. So there's actually a lot of things that SSD provided that helped me throughout my journey. But due to interest of time, I'll just cover two of the biggest things that I think helped me. So first is the applied learning, and second is the opportunities provided to explore passions. So for the case of opportunities, for me, I was actually part of the ICT TDP in SSD, the ICT Talent Development Program. So in terms of the career path I've chosen, this is definitely one of the biggest factors that influenced my career path. So I mean, ICT TDP, we picked up like hard skills like coding and whatnot. But I think the biggest, biggest uh, benefit of it was the exposure and the environment that was provided. So in there, I was actually surrounded by like like-minded people with uh, similar passions for technology. So I remember last time we talked about the latest tech developments, all the iPhones, the Android, and how the Android was really like pretty garbage at the time. And then we even contemplated mining Bitcoins. That was in 2012, yeah, when Bitcoin first came out. And if we actually did that, we'll be rich, but unfortunately we didn't. Yeah, so... I find that this kind of environment is very hard to find anywhere else. Even in, even in NUS computer science, it's, I don't find this kind of environments where everyone is so passionate and talking about the tech developments and everything. Most people are mostly academically focused, even in university. Yeah. So through the ICT TDP, I also went on a school trip to San Francisco, which actually really opened my mind to the vastness of the possibilities and developments in the tech space. And these experiences really broadened my horizons. And even now and through university, I continuously seek the strangest but fun projects. And one of them has actually taken off with, I've actually with a group of friends built a decentralized crypto trading platform. Yeah. 
So I believe this experience doesn't only, it's not only for the case for the ICT TDP. There's many other TDPs and programs for students to explore their interests. I remember during my time, which was almost 10 years ago, there was the science TDP also. Yeah. And I'm sure now the SSD offers much more programs for students to explore their interests and open their minds to what the world offers. So second, for the case of applied learning, I actually feel that this is a really underrated way of teaching in our very Singaporean education system. And this applied learning, the benefits actually really shown when I was in university. So I remember back in SSD, starting from SEC one, we actually did a lot of projects. You know, not, not the kind of projects where you like, you know, you take like content from the textbook, then you like present on it, you know. It's actually like those kind of projects where we have to like do our own research, experiments, draw a conclusion, and then present on our findings. So we did the projects for math, physics, the sciences, and even for humanities, like as for me, geography and social studies. And all the partnership programs to work on interesting projects outside our O-level curriculum, all these combined, actually made me a much better independent learner, which I find really helped me through university. I don't think it's just the case for my course in CS, but what, whatever the lecturer gives us in school, in university is never enough. And we always have to learn a lot of things beyond the given materials. Yeah, and even and for my particular case, in terms of software engineering, uh, when you do software engineering, a lot of requirements are constantly unclear and changing. And I find that a lot of my peers, they are very uncomfortable when it comes to this. So they are like, there's a lot of design consideration based on like requirements, but they are unsure of the requirements and then they cannot move forward. But as for me and other SSC students I see in my course, we're actually much more confident in doing despite the uncertainties and the gaps in our knowledge because we are relatively more comfortable with change. You know, if we take a certain path and the requirements change, we are comfortable with changing our direction as a whole. Yeah. And also I say that surprisingly, even my performance during job interviews were greatly benefited from SSD's education. You know, when I tell people that I go into a top tech company, people think I'm like one of the best students in the course, what a perfect GPA and everything. But I'll, I'll tell you that's not the case. I definitely are far from a perfect GPA student. But the trend nowadays is that companies, they are, their interview styles are less of textbook based questions, which can be grinded. And they are looking for, they are starting to ask more questions that invoke discussions to assess how we think, collaborate and tackle problems. Yeah, so I remember most of my interviews, especially those interviews that were really hard. And I remember having a really fun discussion in my interview actually on how we would, how we would actually solve the problem. Yeah, and, the SS, and this requires a lot of critical thinking and collaboration, which I find the SSD curriculum really encompasses and helps to nurture from a young age. Yeah, so these are just the two biggest things that I, have, that I think SSD curriculum has helped me. That's, as I say, a lot of other things, but due to interest of times, I will not tell them. But just to summarize all in all, I think the education SSD really nurtured me to be all around the industry ready. Yeah. And these are wholly my personal experience based on my journey in ICT and computer science. But I'm sure there are many other alumni out there in different fields, be it STEM related or non-STEM related, that have greatly benefited from SSE's education. And I'm sure if you I'm sure if you plan to come to our school or if your child plans to come to SSD, they will greatly benefit from SSD's education system too. Yeah, thank you.